Hello, you are on the program. Good day to you, sir. I very appreciate this. I very appreciate all what you are talking about it. Good day and good day to all the viewers of Afri Media. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Afri Media. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you, Africa. The East African nation of Uganda is gearing up for its general elections come January 14, 2021, where incumbent President Yoram Museveni and 10 other candidates are vying for the presidency. However, music share turned politician Robert Kaikulani, popularly known as Bobby Wine, stands as the main opposition challenger against Museveni, who is seeking a seat term in office. Over 17 million registered voters are ready to cast their vote amid fears of coronavirus and other insecurities in the country. Museveni is the front runner of the National Resistance Movement, a party that won the 2016 elections with over 60 percent, defeating then opposition front runner Kisa Bisiji of the Forum for Democratic Change at the sea. However, can rising star politician Bobby Wine change the narratives this 2021? Does he have the capacity to unseat President Yoruma Savani? This uh, is a question on the lips of so many people out there in Uganda. In, uh, in the 2021 manifesto, it should be noted that President Yoruma Savani has focused on five priority areas, which include uh, creating wealth and jobs, delivering education and health, ensuring justice and equity, protecting life and property, and above all, achieving economic and political integration but candidates have not yet uh, articulated uh, via foreign policy plan but then we begin to look at the states as the country gets towards the january 2021 slated elections thank you thank you thank you thank you for what you are doing thank you africa does Bobby Wine has uh, what it takes to unseat uh, outgoing President Yoweri Museveni? Can he change the narratives there in the East African nation of Uganda? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have you in this first edition of the program Views on the Continent for this week. Uh, and uh, today we are taking focus on... Uh, on uh, Uganda, we are looking at uh, the uh, upcoming elections uh, there in the East African uh, country uh, amid uh, the coronavirus. Uh, and we are also analyzing the stakes. Uh, we know the front runner, uh, Yoramo Saveni uh, of, of the National Resistance Movement, uh, is running uh, and contesting uh, the presidency with. Then other uh, candidates uh, from the opposition, uh, but then the main challenger that has been making waves uh, over there in Uganda is Bobby Wine. Uh, but then we are looking at the stakes as the country is preparing uh, to vote. We heard in our preamble that over 17 million voters have already registered and are waiting to cast their ballot and to choose their political leaders come the 14th of January 2021. This is what we are talking about on today's edition of the program and I will be inviting us all to be part of this program and to contribute and see here how well we can change the narratives not only in Uganda but also in Africa. It is an informative as well as interactive program. So in the course of the program, I'll be inviting you to dial the numbers you have on your screen and also a participator. Without wasting time, we'll go straight away to meet uh, uh, Mr. Ambe Valentine, joining us to give detailed analysis uh, uh, regarding uh, the election atmosphere in uh, the East African nation of Uganda. It's a pleasure to have you again, uh, Mr. Anvi Valentine. It's been a while. Yes, thank you, Clarice. Good afternoon, viewers of African media. Good afternoon, Africans, especially Cameroonians, my beloved country. I've been away for quite some time because of other engagements, but I'm glad I'm here today. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance to all viewers of African media. It's a privilege again to be here. Thank you very much, Clarice. 
I should be saying thank you to you for accepting to share your own uh, viewpoint uh, regarding uh, the uh, uh, development or the development or political development there in Uganda. But before we go into it proper, let's meet uh, Big Ben Lewis with uh, this report. Ugandans will be heading to the polls on January 14, 2021 to elect the president and the parliament in what has become the most awaited election in East Africa. Incoming President Huri Museveni, who is seeking re-election, is faced by a youth population led by pop star turned politician Bobby Wine. However, can Bobby Wine unseat Museveni is what many are yet to comprehend. Museveni is leading the National Resistance Movement Party, which has survived a tighter election back in 2016. Some Museveni critics went as far as suggesting that long-term opposition candidate Kazi Bisigi, who represented the Forum for Democratic Change, the FDC, could win the election. However, Museveni had a commanding victory at the end of the vote with more than 60%. On one hand, well-known musician Robert Kiangulai is leading the National Unity Party as the opposition party, having formed an alliance with Besigi. But analysts see the backdrop to the Ugandan election with favor Museveni. The COVID-19 pandemic has been managed well by Museveni's administration with a lead to more than 200 deaths. Many Ugandans are happy with the efforts against the COVID-19 pandemic. Wine has more charisma and energy than previous contestants against Museveni, but his rise from the Ugandan ghetto to Ugandan prominence has not necessarily convinced the old guards that he can beat Museveni and run the country. As election dates fast approaches, several controversies now fill the year, including spreading of false information by the opposition. Uganda has suspended all campaigning for January's presidential elections in the capital and 10 highly populated districts citing coronavirus risks. But opposition leaders have continuously breached the measures with rallies exceeding COVID-19 numbers, prompting police arrest. While delivering his Christmas message, Museveni said, we do not support the postponement of elections. The elections will be held on schedule. It is feasible and desirable. The other postponement is not necessary and not feasible. The election have already started. And that was uh, Big Ben Lewis uh, with uh, that uh, detailed uh, report. Of course, the question is, uh, can uh, the uh, young leader on seat uh, President Yoru Museveni, does he have uh, what it takes uh, to bring uh, development uh, in uh, the uh, East African uh, nation? Uh, uh, Mr. Mbaye Valentine, uh, let's uh, first of all start by looking at the uh, uh, general perspective regarding the election atmosphere there in Uganda. Yeah, Clarice, uh, I want to begin by saying that uh, if you understand the political landscape in the continent of Africa, we don't argue again from a shallow point of view. We argue from detailed facts. Uh, considering the Ugandan elections, we have to understand and uh, take a retrospect of how Museveni came to power and his grip of over power till date. Museveni came to power in 1986, January, and uh, when he came to power, you realize that he was caught up by the fever of neocolonialism and imperialism. When he was caught up with that fever, a lot of things were in place in Uganda that he made serious mistakes. Mm -hmm. For instance, the structural adjustment programs that the Europeans brought in Africa, the Absolutely. privatization and the Millennium Goals. So he delved into it and then jeopardized the economy that Milton Obote had established with Idi Amin Dada. Yeah. He sold off the Ugandan Commercial Bank. He also privatized the uh, Uganda Electricity Board and also Uganda Airlines. Those were errors Museveni made from 1986 till the 1999. And now when fuel was discovered in Uganda, he, 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 the imperialists came again to convince him to still act otherwise, but he refused. He began refraining from International Monetary Fund and World Bank. Mm -hmm. Because of that, they realized that he had become stubborn to the imperialists and the neocolonialists because oil was discovered in Uganda, gold was discovered in Uganda, as well as copper. So because of these resources, they tried not to kick him out. They used the first person was Kasi Bisige. Kasi Bisige was the person that they tried to use. He visited London, visited Washington. They tried using him to kick out Museveni, but on four different occasions during his outings, every time he would come back, there would be riots in the country. Yeah. So Museveni struggled to contain him. There was a close ally to Museveni called Babazi. Babazi was a close ally. Mm -hmm. They also used him to conquer Museveni, but they could not succeed. In 2005, Museveni decided to change the concern that it is they had no particular term of office. It's seven years renewable. You don't go two term, three term, four term, as long as you win. So yeah. Museveni had been in power since 1986 to the present date. The person they are trying to use right now is Robert Kiagulani, who is Bobby Wine. Yeah. Bobby Wine, first and foremost, is a musician. 
Secondly, Bobby Wine does not have the financial capacity to face the ruling government. But where does he have the resources he's using right now? Bobby okay. Wine is a weapon in the hand of the European Union to destabilize Uganda. It is true that Museveni had made several mistakes during his early days in power, and he's trying to correct the mistake when he's already grown old. But the truth is, if we are going to prefer somebody, we have to prefer someone who is pro-African than somebody who has been who's going to be used by the West. Of course, and so, it is also good to note and uh, inform the Africans that Museveni has always been a Pan-African. Yes, a serious Pan-Africanist. Absolutely, He's yeah. working for the growth of Uganda. Now, he asked the imperialists to build a refinery in Uganda, but they refused. They wanted to exploit and exploit export the oil yeah. rather than building a refinery so they say it is not feasible and it's not realistic to build a refinery mm -hmm. that is where the trouble came from so the fuel in uganda is contained the 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 the, 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 the copper is contained the gold is contained iron ore is contained because Museveni has come to understand the whims and caprices of the imperialists Absolutely. now since they tried using babazi they could not kasi bisiki they could not now Bobby wine is a main man they want to use not to bring him down now i want Uganda has to understand that in the perspective of human beings, you will see Robert Kyagulani as somebody who is going to bring a change to Uganda, but he's coming to repeat back what Museveni is struggling to take the nation out of. Absolutely. As much as we do not celebrate this grip over power, but you see, there is an adage in English that says, a bird in the hand, what two in the bush. This particular Museveni we are seeing right now, which we have condemned, this is system going to power. We will prefer him to stabilize Uganda and then hand power to some other person who has the pan-African mentality. Absolutely. Rather than giving it to the hand of somebody who is practically in the hand of the European Union as a weapon of mass destruction. Because I think Museveni has realized his errors and is doing everything possible right now to restore the dignity of Uganda. That is exactly the picture of what is happening right now in Uganda. And if Uganda doesn't seem to catch the understanding. Secondly, Museveni has a grip in the suburbs, the grassroots politics. He has a grip in the suburbs. So you, you realize that at the end of the day, there is 100% guarantee that Museveni will carry these elections. Forget about the public uh, enthusiasm and the, the frenzy that uh, Bobby Wine is carrying around the okay. nation. Yeah. The masters of politics is something different. But why made a statement recently that in case he wins, he will make the Speaker of the Assembly, he will give the President a very fat seat. It has caused a lot of tension. Absolutely. How yeah. can a Speaker in the House of the National Assembly, who is not even your party member, be promised a heavy seat when you intend, you have never even gotten you the power? Gotten the you started yeah. demonstrating corruption. It shows a lot of uh, uh, amateur, a lot of premature or, or immature manifestation from the young man's own domain. Mm -hmm. I think Uganda does not need a youth at this capacity because the nation is still fragile. The nation has not gotten a particular stability like other European nations like Canada, that you can circle, you can bring a young man, Finland, you can bring a young person. Uganda at this stage right now needs a mature person. I would prefer they look for somebody far more better or Maintain your survey. Okay, thank you so very much, uh, Amway Valentine. Of course, uh, getting listening to you keenly, uh, one can say uh, that uh, uh, you prefer the uh, incumbent, uh, but then yes. le let's try to educate the world, especially Africans, because people are always uh, tempted to believe that when a leader stays long in power, it means that leader is a dictator. I want to uh, pr probably uh, uh, relate, uh, relate Museveni with other African leaders that have always been advocating uh, for one Africa, taking uh, uh, solving uh, African problems using African, mm. uh, actually African uh, solutions to African problems. But then uh, he, he has promised in his manifesto, we, we uh, saw it uh, uh, ensuring uh, security because it said defense is all and when defense come, uh, comes, uh, there is bound to, to be uh, security and job creation. So let's try to educate uh, Africans that staying longer in power and doing the good thing is better than giving the country in the hands of imperialists or uh, somebody who is backed by the, the country's enemies. Exactly what I've been singing as a song on all media platforms. If somebody is kept on a throne and is doing the job effectively, why change him? There is no guarantee the person coming after him may do even half of what he's doing. For instance, what is happening in Rwanda. 
Paul Kagame had been there. He took the nation for many years and he's raised it to this level where it is right now. And he even intended going out of power. It was a parliament that sat down, revamped the constitution and begged him to come back in power. Those are the people who understand that a nation's growth is tied to leadership, not to a man. If a man has demonstrated competence and acute uh, 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 bravery in leadership, I think it should be kept in the place of authority. Changing authority without practical change in the government or the structure of the nation does not benefit. It doesn't take many messiahs to save the world. In many nations, look like Singapore. Singapore had had many presidents before finally they finally got the president that came and brought a revolution in the country. That's it right. goes to many other nations. England had many presidents and prime ministers before uh, this man came. Winston Churchill came and then transformed the nation. Mm -hmm. In every nation, there is some person that God will raise that will come as a role model and a pathfinder. Look at what is happening right now in the country of Tanzania. John Pombe Magufuli has taken the economy and brought it to a middle-income economy. Absolutely. Now the yeah. parliament is even insisting to change the country and give him a third term, which is against the rules of engagement. So the problem is not staying in power. The problem is delivering the goods. If somebody is there, he delivers the goods. People begin to riot. People begin to bring chaos and upheavals broke out in nations when a president is on the throne and does not carry out effective uh, 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 changes in the country. But a man like, uh, 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 considering what Museveni has uh, gone through in the years past, I think he has had a mastery of the manipulation of the imperialists over most African territories. If you look at the same time where Kasi Esigbe was fighting against Museveni, mm -hmm. was the same time Morgan Van Girai was used by the imperialists to fight against Mugambe 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 in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe you describe yeah, those yeah. guys who always look for petty soldiers to use in their hand as a whip to manipulate the economy. Mm -hmm. Since oil gold and iron ore were discovered in the land of uganda it has been one crash or another from the uh, sigbe to bawazi yeah. now it will be wine Bobby when Bobby wine, wine will be used by them and they see no result they will look for the next person the attack is very wide mosoveni is trying to restore recently the Minister of aviation in uganda brought in back the first ugandan airline after many years that mosoveni sold that that corporation yeah. a, a, a uganda electricity board was sold you're going to commence upon was so. Now, when Museveni came back to his sense in 1999, to 2000, he had to start retrieving Uganda Development Bank, which was an economic hub, economic institution in the country that was booming the economy. So when he decided to start restoring all these people, they began raising people like Bobby Wine to stand up to, to contest. We don't support Museveni's dictatorship or long stay in power, but I think if we judge him from what he's standing right now, every Ugandan supposed to throw their weight behind Museveni because why? He is now realizing errors and wants to restore the dignity of the nation that he sold some years ago. Takes, of course, ahead of the elections. We've seen that over the years. You made mention of Kisa Bisiji. Mm -hmm. He has always been a defiant uh, opposition figure there in Uganda. And we see again uh, uh, Robert uh, Kaguyani, popularly, uh, popularly known as Bobby Wine, yes. coming again and in a defiant nature. Uh, what do we? What can we put of this uh, as the country gets towards the uh, January 14, uh, 2021 elections to make sure of that uh, the democracy of uh, the country is not undermined with, because they've started like they're not happy and uh, opposition has started talking of vote rigging and whatsoever before uh, the elections proper. So how can this undermine uh, the democratic nature of the forthcoming elections? Let me be sincere with you. There is no genuine elections in Africa. Nobody should deceive you. Even Museveni, they will not conduct free and fair elections. All African leaders will never conduct free and fair elections. It's a few of them that still respect that thing they call democracy. What of what we practice in Africa is ethnocracy, geopolitics, and gerontocracy. Those mm -hmm. are the kind of government we have in Africa here, yeah. where people will choose to leave somebody in power because it comes from their ethnic group. Yes, and then a geopolitical region may choose to throw their way behind something because it comes from that geopolitical region. And then yeah. there is a gerontocracy. No, so if you look at it critically, there is going to be no free and fair elections in, in Uganda. For instance, to tell you for a start, they have now stopped campaigns. Public campaigns, yeah. In... Uh, Lungu, in uh, Kampala City, in uh, Toboro, most of the cities that have been stopped because why? In the name of COVID-19. But the truth is that Robert Kiagulani has population in those places more than Museveni. So he's trying to frustrate his activities there, which means from a shallow point of view, everybody needs Robert Kiagulani. 
But the truth is, as a political analyst who understands the political terror of Africa and mm -hmm. knows the whims and caprices of the imperialists, I'm telling you, given this analysis, Robert Kaglani is not competent for Uganda now. It's true Museveni has made his mistakes, but I'm thinking now that Museveni is trying to restore and to correct the errors he made. And that's the reason why the imperialists want him out of power by all costs. So, talking about some free and fair elections or democratic uh, establishment, it doesn't exist. Let me be sincere with you, Clary. It doesn't exist. Let's not beat around the bush. This thing that we call um, free and fair elections in Africa, and so even Ghana, we respect it so much that you're going to conduct free and fair elections. They were still, they are still in court right now. Charges are being played against the NDC party that won against the MPP. So if you want to analyze things from another point of view, you realize that the election results are already out before they are even going. Somebody interviewed Motoveni recently and said, how will you allow your name to go down the annals of history as a dictator that ruled for five times? And he said, a dictator was voted five times. He must be a wonderful dictator. <laughs> Most dictator was voted five times. Nobody will ever want to vote Museveni five times. The physical manifestation publicly of Uganda tells you that they don't want Museveni anymore. But as somebody who understands, I'm giving analysis as somebody who understands the political terror of Africa. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that what sometimes the crowd supports is not what the nation needs. That's the simple truth. Because sometimes we get tired of people. Look at what has happened recently in Cameroon. From 1945 to 26 December to 19 to 2020 December, the colonial parts of Western Africa were abolished. It now depends on the various presidents to see if they're going to renew it or not. Absolutely. And there are new certain around circulating around that the president of this country has refused to resign those deals. Now that is that not a giant strike? That's a giant strike. Now, if somebody were to accept the conditions to take over power, then he will come back and renew the deeds and then plunge the country back into the same dilemma that the former president is trying to walk them out. Mm -hmm. Remember, most of these presidents came to power, most of them came to power after Idi Amin had passed, yeah, who was a yeah. fee masha and the conqueror of the British Empire, GSO, GSC, and all the titles that he earned. From there, the Pan Africanist meeting of Bote, Dr. Mitter, who was very close to Kwame Nkrumah, came to power. Those are the people who tried to set up a certain level of structure. There were other leaders in Uganda that came some last for one year, some last for six months. We don't count them as leaders. Absolutely, we are talking yeah. about people who just like chat here. We have had well, we have, in uh, the country, yeah. uh, We have uh, uh, Francois Tombambai who took power and he was killed. And then from there, Gukunu Wede came. From Gukunu Wede, now we had um, um, Isan Abre before now Idris Debi. Within that period, we had other leaders who took power for some six years, six months. So one year, we don't count them as leaders. As it stands now, Museveni is supposed to be the third recognized president in the land of Uganda. And I can tell you from 1986 to date, Museveni has made severe mistakes, severe mistakes, but now he's trying to correct them. And I think that the nation right now needs somebody who has understood the operations of this imperialist and new colonialist. And if somebody like Museveni is not given the opportunity to restructure things and give somebody that has his philosophy, and they entrust this thing in the hand of a young man called Robert Kagulani. I can give six reasons why Kagulani is not competent. The nation, first of all, right now is at the brink of either making a decision for themselves forever or say their destiny a second time. A fool at 40 is a fool forever. Absolutely. African yeah. nations are 60 years old. If they didn't get white at 14, then they are idiots forever. If this nation again is giving the materials back to the imperialists, which I think Robert Kagulani can give it. Mm -hmm. Secondly, he doesn't have the tenacity in leadership to handle the nation. Thirdly, this young man was a musician. Where did he generate the income that he's carrying out his campaign? Is to tell you clearly that there are some forces behind him sponsoring him. That tells you clearly. So it is it, it, from all analysis, it tells you that another weapon is in the hand of the European Union to bring Mussolini down from where he wants to take nations to. Yeah. I do not support his philosophy. I do not appreciate him. But when I have studied the Political analysts of Uganda, I think Museveni stands a better chance. Okay. Out of all the 10 other contestants. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you are just uh, tuning in, you are on to Afric Media and does his views on the continent. We are looking at the forthcoming elections in Uganda. What are the stakes? What do you think? Uh, do you think uh, Bobby Wine uh, can change the narratives by unseating uh, uh, Yoro Museveni, uh, who is contesting for the set time as president? Uh, or do you think uh, Museveni still has the chance to stay as the president of uh, the East African nation of uh, Uganda? I think uh, we'll be uh, opening our lines and we go straight away uh, to meet Shu Gerard, who is joining us uh, already. Hello to you, Shu Gerard, and welcome to the program. Of African media. If, if we look critically at uh, democracy in Uganda, we understand that it is spirit dictatorial 
even though they pretend to have been going for election. Because the, the President Yuvul Museveni does not want to leave power. He will only leave power either by death or when he likes. All has been put to place for him to win the election. You remember that all were made to oust Kiza Besije. We can't count how many times he had been locked up in prison for trying to challenge the almighty Yuvul Museveni who claimed to be almighty and his party in Uganda. So this uh, Bobby uh, candidate, the Bobby technician, uh, the, the Bobby musician, and a, a deputy, it will be a fast, except the intervention of God. If God say yes, this man, the Reverend Museveni will go, then he will go. But if it is that, if it is by, by the ballot box controlled by man and the will of man, it cannot go. Because all have been cooked, prepared, for Yoram Museveni to win the elections come uh, uh, February 14. It's a nation that is ruled by a dictator. It's a nation that does not want opposition to, to, to rise. It's a nation that once you're against the ruling party or against the president, you can be put to jail or they will do all to oust you in whatever position that you want to contest. So that's African democracy. That's democracy that is triumphing in, in, in Uganda. And we have no doubt, there is no doubt than to say that you will be sovereign will win the election because all have been cooked for him to win the election. You cannot say you want to provide her the education security at we are going for the fifth time in like president in power. What were you doing before you say you want to promise the country that you, you do those things uh, or what you are promising? You will be president for, 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 for the fourth term, for one term you cannot do it, the second term you cannot do it. And then it's not a third term, fourth term, or fifth term that you will do those things because you are already all in power. It was just like Mugabe was in Zimbabwe. So, so that, that's a scenario in which Uganda finds himself and there will be, there's nothing that will stop him from winning the elections. Because election, first of all, is a fast and the members of the independent, of the, what they call independent commission, uh, electoral commission, is appointed by him. All is a fast, all be made for him to win the elections. So. It, 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 the participation of, uh, of Bobby is just history. Thank you. But I believe and think that one day all the dictatorial regime in Africa will go path away for more democracy in Africa so that Africa will not be left again as the livestock of the world in terms of democracy and economic development. Thank you for participating uh, and if you are just joining us you are most welcome we stay with our callers uh, joining uh, Maurice Martins uh, calling from uh, Cameroon Douala Cameroon hello to you Martin and welcome to the program please uh, go on with your contribution Uh, unfortunately, we have uh, difficulty getting to Maurice uh, Martin. Okay, he's there, right there with us. You can go on with your contribution. Good afternoon, Clarice and the panelists on the studio. I am Martin calling in from Douala. Yes, uh, Gladys, and so far as the elections in Uganda is uh, concerned now, we know uh, we actually at this point we can determine the results insofar as the incumbent president who also double as a massive dictator in that east african region is running as a president in a presidential race we know actually what they say the election as you say at least clarice is just a formality we know them there's actually no way that any opposition particularly in most of these dictatorial African nations, can ever triumph through, through election. You actually discover that Mesoveni is actually somebody who came into power through uh, the struggle. He actually pushed away, and uh, he fought in the bush for several years and pushed away the Idi Amin. And since he took on power, at least he was given credit for maybe bringing back democratic reforms in the country and creating uh, constitutional law. But he is actually has actually been losing points since he decided to grip in power and actually be a very very mass, massive and giant dictator in that uh, particular region 
we still give him kudos at least his uh, troops have actually fought well to make sure that peace returned in most of the countries particularly the congos rwanda and the rest but his overstay in power has actually been overdue and he has actually lost point just to say the least clarice the elections now in that country it is just a formality and nobody can push away um, uh, Mesoveni until he decides to step off or to give uh, 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 the, the position to his uh, son who is actually another uh, uh, another uh, general in the army so to talk of election we know that actually uh, somebody in the opposition party of the fdc like uh, uh, kiza beseje had actually done a lot into that country we have seen how he has actually used uh, the military most of you used the military to muzzle him and even uh, BCG deciding to give the position to the next person to pull on. We are actually seeing uh, another triumph, a uh, young man like uh, Bobby Wine, Robert Kiangulangi, who has actually come up with a new party, which is actually uh, uh, a national unity platform. But we have also discovered how the heavy hand of the police, the heavy hand of the military, they are actually pursuing him and make sure they pull him to the fall. But whatever, I still uh, perceive their actions as positive. But let us take it now, once and for all, that elections in that country is just a formality and can never be any post, any means that will push over Museveni. Museveni and the rest of the dictators in that part of the world, most of the time they always feel that they have done a lot into, the, into, into their countries, that they cannot just be pushed away by anything in the name of a democratic vote. Once more, have a nice day, Clarice. Thank you so very much, uh, Maurice uh, Martins, for participating. Uh, those of you just joining us, uh, this is Views on the Continent, an informative and interactive program. We are looking at stakes as Uganda gets uh, towards the 2021 general elections. What is your opinion? Uh, who do you think is the right candidate to lead uh, the East uh, African nation uh, this uh, time around, uh, Mr. Uh, Ambi Valentine? Let's go to analyze uh, the position of the opposition. Uh, of course, we want to dwell on why uh, Kisa Bisije, we know that he has always been uh, the main opposition figure out there in Uganda. We saw how he was involved in the last elections, 2016, and coming out of 2021, surprisingly, he's not uh, uh, part of the candidates uh, vying for the presidency. Is that much to it, or is he just uh, tired uh, of uh, uh, probably fighting to be at the helm of the country? Uh, what you see, the political landscape of Africa, as I keep saying, is very complicated. We have better uh, idols who are sitting on thrones, not presidents. Idols that deserve to be worshipped. Idols that deserve to be honored forever. They have built a system whereby nothing penetrates the system. What happens in Uganda happens in most African countries. Most. I was listening to a DB interview recently by some French journalist about his stay in power in Chad. He said to them the two things that kept him in power was the fact that the nation was at war and secondly it was France. When they brought the constitution for, for it to be changed that he remains in power, he refused. It was some of his collaborators as ministers behind him that went and revamped the constitution to put him in power. Absolutely. Yeah. He said it clearly. So how do you explain such a situation where people have taken systems? Either the person the dictator has built a system that he cannot go out, he works with the parliament, he works with the senate, he works with the military. Any nation where the president is in good terms with the electoral committee, electoral board, the senate, the parliament, and the, the military, I can guarantee you that he can stay for as long as he can. If you realize recently, Museveni has done a lot of sacks and replacements, sacks and replacements within the police and the military. Why? Those are people who are threatening his existence in power. And if anybody in the military or the police threatens is to kick, his, kick him out of power, he will sack you and put only the person that will adhere to his whims and caprices. That's what I'm telling you. That it is a system already set up. 
can can we not say that uh, they are actually putting the interest of the country? You you actually in your analysis made mention of that if most Veni leaves power, Uganda will become very vulnerable. Of course, can't we also put it this way uh, rather than looking at the the, the fact that uh, leaders want to stay in power, but then nah. putting the interest of, of, the, the, of the nation uh, first because they know that uh, there are many people who are ready to sell out the nation. That is what I'm telling you. If a president has indoctrinated the core members of the country to understand that the interest of the nation is more important, the common man in the street will not understand what is happening inside. They will argue from the way they feel. The heat, the feel, the hunger, the feel, the, the barrow, the feel. But somebody yeah, is protecting something far more important than what you are feeling outside. It's, it's important for you to rather lose a finger than to lose an eye. That's it, because with your eye, you lost your vision, you lost your sight, you lost everything. But with your finger, you can still move along with life. So sometimes, a man who is feeling a pain on the finger doesn't understand a man who does not see. The pain on his hand gives him so much pain that he feels like he's the highest pain on the man who does not see. It's worse than him. So those who are outside who are not feeling well, probably don't have to pay their rent or basic commodities, they complain more not knowing that the president is also doing something to protect the interest of the nation, which is far more important than what you are going through right now. Absolutely. So if the members of the country understand the president's position in protecting the citizens of the country, they will work in collaboration with him to maintain him in power. That's why I'm letting you understand that what is happening right now in Rwanda, it's a combination of the core members of the government. They have decided to put the president there to stay because they discovered that he holds the interest. He holds the interest of the nation at heart. Absolutely, there is no yeah. country where the president will stand for the interest of the country and the interest of that country fight against him. The common it's not everything that is seen on, on screen. It is not everything. It's not everything. There are many dictators in Africa who have entered into power. They were carried by the fever of imperialism and colonialism only to realize later. And then when they start correcting it, people see it as if it's a grip of power. Yeah. No, no, they are trying to correct the errors that they committed. But they will not come on air and say because that pride in leadership can say I failed in the first ten years of my leadership. I'm trying to correct it. They cannot do it. Absolutely. They will do it yeah. in silence. And only those who have been working close to them will understand. Close to them understand that this man is working for the interest of the country. But the common that does not understand will be freaking out. Oh, let him go out of power. Let him get out. Let him get out. No, it's not like that. That's why I say when you analyze from a shallow point of view, you will celebrate the masses complain. But if you go to the inner caucus of the challenge, Absolutely. you will understand why some presidents have chosen to stay in power, not because of the luxury, not because of the joy, but because of... He said, he did say, I've never been happy, and I'm not still happy. That was a statement of the Chilean president recently. I have never been happy, and, and I am not still happy. That tells you that what? Occupying presidential seat is not a prestige some of these guys. Some of them have decided to walk and sacrifice themselves sometimes as even sacrificial land for the benefit of the nation. But the common man who does not understand what is happening inside. They will, for instance, you and I can be here. And then probably somebody comes here, kill you. And then I come there down to see you are gasping in your brain, then you die. The fact is that they caught me with you dying. Absolutely. They choose I'm not the killer. I'm not the killer. The killer is gone. So sometimes when the common man is crying in the street, they will not understand what is in the house. A father can choose to keep children hungry because of school fees. But everyone comes and sees the children crying of hunger and will say that the man is a bad man. Not knowing that he's starving them for the moment to keep them for the future. So when the president sometimes stay in power, we say they are stay in power, which we do not support it. But if you go into it detailly, that stay in power is instead to protect the interests of the country. the country. And any inner core member who understands the president's dream of protecting the sovereignty of the country the economy of the country and boosting its independence they will fight tooth and nail even to rig elections to make sure they maintain him there that is blatant truth and that is exactly what is happening right now in uganda people from the outside world look at robert kiagulani as a solution but if you look from a political analyst point of view he is a problem now to the ugandan economy which we do not need him now I'm sincere. Neither do I suppose of any, but I think that um, they say when somebody has a running stomach, everywhere is toilet. I think Museveni should be that toilet where can sustain us for the time being mm -hmm. before somebody better off comes in power. That's the truth. Okay, listening to you, <laughs> Kinley, and with the the, 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 the the deep analysis on actually what is happening in Uganda and elsewhere in Africa. Yes. Now, when you look at Uganda, uh, uh, Bobby Wine has actually cajoled many youths out A there. Lot. And you, you, like you rightly said, the discontentment on the part of the youth. 
how can we make or we make the youth to understand uh, that Robert Mugabe, uh, I beg your yeah. pardon, Yorma Seveni, uh, changing or continue, uh, vying for the presidency is for the interest of the country and not his personal or political interest. The president will never be bold enough to come outside and make such statement. Absolutely. Because it absolutely. will only attract more criticism and also stir up anger against from the people who are fighting against him. Uh, now let's talk to, to this opposition candidate, Bobby Wine, because actually he, he has the youth at heart. Okay. How let me give, can he? Absolutely. Let, let me yeah. give you a simple analysis. A man came to power in 1986. By 1999, all the state institutions that he privatized, he began yearning for them to come back. To come back, yeah. In 2005, he decided to change the constitution that there should be no specific term or tenure in office. Mm -hmm. You rule as long as you win. So that has given him enough guarantee to hold power until he corrects the mistakes that he made. Now, recently, the same Uganda Airlines that Museveni privatized in the name of structural adjustment programs, in the name of Millennium Goals, in the name of privatization, Museveni is going back. The Ugandan Development Bank, that was the last man standing. He had to conserve it. Do you know right now, because of the fact that Yoweri Mutaveni has refused that if a refinery is not constructed in Uganda, they cannot exploit the oil. The oil in Uganda has been untapped. Which Robert Kiagulane will gladly export and explore that oil because he wants to stay in power without any refinery. Museveni is not looking for any new food to eat or children to spend money to sponsor his children. I think for the number of years he has over 35 years, he has embezzled enough money to keep his generation. Why is it still in power? We should look at these things. There is no data that for 30 years that has not made money to feed the next 200 generation. But the problem is why is it staying in power? It is this thin line between understanding his stay in power and considering him as a dictator that most people don't understand. Now, his stay in power in the years earlier failed because he was not working for the well-being of the people. Just like I, 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 I'm take, I take power in Cameroon and begin working against Cameroon and then after some time, I come to the understanding that, okay, it's time for me to start correcting my mistakes. It looks like the errors I have made, trying to correct a mistake, make me now a dictator or somebody who wants to cling to power. It's not the case. It's not the case. Uganda has been a counter because there is a dry land. And Uganda, Uganda is among the Great Lakes, eh? Lake Victoria, Absolutely, and yeah. most of the developed areas. So you discover it is an entrance in also. The, in the yes, region. yes. It is also an entrance to the great East African country, Arade Sea. Yes where you have a lot of resources. So with all these things put together, they want to lose a data that they can easily get what is in Uganda or pass through him to get what is in that The basic. Democratic Republic of Congo. Are you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this is where our challenge is. Now, I know most people are watching for ourselves, but this man is beginning to babble with his tongue. He has always connected us. When you grow in knowledge and grow in analysis, you don't speak on one side. You must be objective. Absolutely. I'm beginning to understand why some of these guys cling to power. And I must confess to Africans to understand that if we have to have Africans at heart, at heart. I think it's better we give them the opportunity to stay more in power than begin to beat around the bush with some young men that will come and frustrate us. That's the truth. <laughs> of course, uh, the interest <laughs> of Africa is it's what is very, and very important. But the, in his manifesto, I want us to underline that uh, Museveni talked about uh, political integration. Yes. So with, w how can uh, the country ensure political integration? Because when you look at it critically in Africa, so many people always feel like if I belong to this party, I am already an enemy to this person Hello, yeah. Yeah, who belongs to the other party. So how can there be economic or political integration to ensure economic growth? Because I believe that when a nation is at peace, there is bound to be positive economic growth. Of course. It is this free and fair election that has never for once been done that Museveni is struggling right now to establish. The errors that were committed. Because they could constantly rig elections, put you in power. You are enjoying at the essence of your people. But when you start working for the interest of the people, you want to correct the errors that they people plunge you in, into. Mm -hmm. So Museveni, when you talk about political integration, listen to what I'm telling you. It's, it's going to be in such a way that individuals, don't be surprised that 
Uganda after Museveni becomes a confederation, a confederation yeah. where individuals will be allowed to develop their localities. Power will be evenly distributed because I think federation is a system of government where power is fully distributed. It is mm -hmm. whether it is direct or quasi federation. Now, when this power is properly distributed, you discover that each community can develop itself. Where you in a parliament of 108 members, you have about a kind of 50 from another party. From another party. 20 from another party. 30. Not that one we have 108 members, one party has 140 members. That's not, that's not democracy. I think he's trying to bring Uganda to that position whereby competent people with skills and talent who handle the growth of the economy yeah. not because you belong to a party and that you are a dunce they put you in responsibility because what will happen with is, is, is multi-party as key most of the country and the most of the countries in africa somebody who is not competent is a center because belong to a party yeah. why should we look for people who don't even have the brains they because of that there are males in cameroon can never write their names they're because they're from the civilian Okay, uh, let's let's uh, stay in Uganda, of course, and we are looking at the country. Uh, it is gearing uh, towards the February, uh, the January uh, 14, uh, 2021 elections. So let's look at this, uh, Mr. Ambi. What awaits the candidates uh, uh, this time around? To just to remind our lead, uh, televiewers that this is an interactive as well as informative program. You can dial the numbers you have on the screen uh, and then you uh, actually uh, you actually uh, contribute and give your own quota. But then I want us to listen to this uh, very important uh, excerpt of President Yoru Museveni where he said uh, that elections must hold in uh, the country, uh, denying uh, uh, that uh, he will not postpone the elections due to the coronavirus. I uh, will invite us to listen to him. Let's listen to this excerpt of uh, President Yoru Museveni underlining that elections will hold as planned on the 14th of uh, January 2021. And I'll be right back. In the neutral time I had with His Grace, I told him that uh, how can this be? First of all, it's not, it's it's not it's not necessary, and it's it's not feasible. Why? It's not necessary because we can have elections even with this corona. We can have elections. We voting. I, I have been campaigning by using the radio, which reaches many people because it goes to the home. When you go to the rally, you only talk to those who are at the rally. Uh, but through the radio, I, I can talk to people. People, people listen. Now coming to the voting, voting is even simpler because people can come, social distancing, and they vote and go. So what is the problem? There's no, no big problem other than the people who don't want to who don't want uh, e e e politics by by message by giving messages of solutions who want something else so th th there is no practical reason why the voting can cannot or should not take place i don't think it is it is certainly it's not correct for me Although I am a Christian and I am, I'm, I'm aware of us in the Bible, to come and start uh, lecturing the church, you, you have elected a bad bishop here, you have not followed the right procedure. <laughs> it's not, although I am a Christian, but I, I really will be out of order for me to go and, 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 and start commenting, especially publicly, on matters. Of, of 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 the churches we do not uh, support the postponement of elections the elections will be held on schedule those are the words of uh, president yoru Museveni. he was reacting of course uh, mr ambi to a bishop there in uganda who actually uh, proposed uh, that elections be postponed because uh, some ugandans feel that uh, with uh, the prevalence of COVID-19, elections won't be free and fair. But then uh, Museveni underlined uh, that those were just uh, statements from uh, detractors and that elections were pushed through as uh, planned.
to tell you how state manage these elections have been programmed it's very simple how do you ban rallies because of covid 19 and insist for elections to go on in the midst of covid 19. very problematic very problematic that's to let you understand that these people already know what they intend to do there is no elections in uganda Yoweri is going to renew his tenure in office. It's as simple as ABC. Elections were banned in Kampala City, Tororo, Masaka, Wasiko, Njinja, Lu <coughs> Kalungu. Those are places that, and other places. These are major strongholds of the, uh, 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 opposition. the opposition party. Major strongholds. Now he decided to ban elections in the name of COVID-19 that the highest number of persons that can gather is 200. How can 200 persons gather in a, in a town of about 20,000 persons? And you know very well that if these elections or these campaigns are carried out, there are information that will be passed over that will sabotage your reputation as a president and bring you down. Then now you are saying that there will be no campaign in these areas. Many, many, many cities, Kampala City, uh, uh, um, Tororo, Masaka, Wakiso, Njinja, those are all towns in this the, the, the nation of uganda he stopped campaigns in those areas in the name of covid 19. then now a bishop comes up and say for the fact that you people have a, a, a ban rallies and campaign meetings in these areas it's better off we don't carry out the elections in general because of the covid 19. he says nothing will stop the election i wish to ask that during rallies and during elections which one has a greater possibility of to counter covid 19. Because elections, you stand on the line. Yes. You're going to vote. You are very close to each other. In rallies, you can dispersely place yourselves in an environment. But in an election, you stand on a crew. You follow the line. And there is closer contact with persons more than ever before. Secondly, everyone touches the voter's card before voting. Those who are counting it equally touches it. And it definitely shows that COVID-19 could be transferred from one material to another. So how many persons will contact COVID-19 during elections and will not contact during campaign? It's to tell you that if the mechanism that is put in place for them to win the elections in January has already been put in place, nothing is going to cancel it. So we are just going there to renew his office, in, his tenure in office, not a matter of beating around the bush and saying that uh, Museveni is going to do that. No, no, no. If we okay. go, for, you know, look at what happened in America in 2016. The population we knew from the population that Larry Clinton was to win. But unfortunately, when they went to the ballot box, it was Trump that won. The same way you are getting the picture of how the population is jeering and celebrating the coming of another Messiah called Kiagulani Akababi wine, you will go to the ballot boxes and realize that Museveni has won. Of course, uh, <laughs> while the nation is preparing, let's look at what is at stake, at, uh, especially to the candidates who actually emerges uh, victorious what he has to do, what he has to correct in Uganda, probably job creation, especially as uh, the youths are concerned. You know, a lot of these candidates, first and foremost, have been heavily brutalized. Bobby Wine has been beaten, threatened to be killed on many occasions, and other uh, 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 moderates has also been threatened on many occasions. Journalists have been shut down, cracked down. Some have been, I, one of Bobby Wine's campaign, he decided to abandon the campaign to carry journalists to the hospital. What we are expecting for anybody who's going to win is to understand that Uganda has gotten to another economically because of the natural resources discovered in the nation for now. And it needs a technocrat to man the resources in such a way that the inhabitants of that country and the edges of that country should enjoy the resources of that country. Most of the African countries that are suffering because their resources are being managed by outsiders. If somebody is coming to power in the land of Uganda, the person should be someone that has a national heart and be able to protect the resources of the people. If at all that individual can do, no matter who is coming, if they can play this pivotal role by protecting the interests of the people and their resources, mm -hmm. then that's the best leadership i think can ever come to uganda right now because why uganda is like a virgin that is just married it needs somebody to impregnate the virgin to give birth to something substantial and i think it's somebody somebody who has a, a, a proper understanding of the manipulations of these neo-colonialists and imperialists should be given the opportunity to manage uganda for now because a lot of resources have come up that the post of them must change. Mm -hmm. The standard of living of your, all Ugandans must change. You cannot be having such resources and still remain in penury. That would be total failure as far as leadership is concerned.
and that's the reason why I keep insisting that even though Museveni is not the best, but he's better for now. Okay. Uh, of course, we have just uh, two minutes to be together, but then I want us to, to analyze uh, uh, the statement. Uh, I always want to accentuate on it. Uh, some time ago, uh, President Yuri Museveni said that Africa has all it takes to develop politically, economically, and socially. But then he said differences in ideologies is what is actually tearing Africa apart. Let's try to bring this to Uganda and see how politicians in Uganda can reconcile the different uh, ideologies and all their differences and put uh, the interest of uh, the country or the people first. The best political revolution that Museveni can bring in Uganda right now is first and foremost after winning the elections, he should start appointing his opponents into the of leadership. In other words, telling them that I'm not against you because I hate you, I'm against you because I want to give you an opportunity to serve. If he's able to appoint people whom he considers competent from other political parties into the place of leadership, because what is so bad in African politics is that if, and, uh, for instance, in Cameroon, if a civilian president takes power, he can never appoint an MROC or an SDM member to become something in the government. That's how bad it is. Who told you that only your party members have what it takes to grow the nation? If you are working for national reconstruction and national growth, I think every competent, intelligent individual, no matter the political party, race, clan, or community they come from, as long as they have what it takes to give the nation another leap, they should be brought into the system. I'm yet to see that government in Africa that will appoint opposition leaders into their own government because they have what it takes to grow the country, not because it comes from their political party. That is where real democracy starts. Okay, thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Amdo Valentine. It was great uh, being with you, and I appreciate uh, the analysis. And uh, those of you who participated, I want to say thank you for always trusting your Pan-African television. Uh, this is where we're going to put an end to today's edition of the program Views on the Continent. But that's not all. Keep trusting your Pan-African television for information is knowledge. I'll be with you sometime tomorrow as we discuss the development in Africa. Bye-bye for now. Hello. Hello, you're on the program. Good day to you, sir. I, I very appreciate it. I very appreciate all what you are talking about it. Good day and good day to us, the viewers of Afrin Media. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Afrin Media. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you, Africa.